Hello, thank you for watching Christian Book Review. I'm Lucas Kitchen. Don't forget to subscribe and click that little other notification button so you know when we're doing new uh, book reviews. So, we are doing The Door Within. This is a sci, I'm sorry, it's not sci-fi, it's fantasy. This is in the fantasy genre. It's kind of um, swords without the sorcery, I guess you could say. So there's no real sorcery theme in it. This is a fantasy that as you go through, you will realize is a biblical allegory. Although the allegory is hidden enough where it's not it's not pedantic. I have read some biblical allegory where I was sort of rolling my eyes and just felt like, boy, that's too on the nose. Uh, but for this one, it was allegorical, but it was also um, mysterious enough, and it wasn't it wasn't a tight allegory. So the characters the characters could still explore, and there were still things that were unexpected. One of my frustrations with allegory sometimes is if you know what the allegorical material is built on, then you know what's coming. You know the twists and turns, and it actually kind of becomes boring. So for me, this allegory still worked. Now, I will say, if you take a look at my scorecard, I will say that this book is uh, unabashedly for kids. It's on the uh, it's on the lower end of the YA scale. So the author apparently was a, I want to say a middle school English teacher who began to write this and his students loved it. So this is a good read for middle school. Okay, so I brought uh, my daughter Eileen. I thought we'd talk about the book real quick because she enjoyed it quite a bit. So um, did, did we read The Door Within or did we... What did we, how did we, we listen to it? Listen to the audiobook, that's right. Okay. So in um, in the door within, do you remember those little creatures that made the tunnels? Yeah. So what did you think of that? I like those. That was pretty cool, wasn't it? Um, Here, you gotta look this way. I like those because uh, the boy and um, the girl they went down the tunnels. They went through the tunnels. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I thought that was unique. The big storm came through, and they they had to um, stay alive so they could save it. Yeah. So would you say, overall, just thinking about the whole book, would you give it a thumbs up and say, yeah, people should read it? Because that's what we're doing. We're trying to help people decide if they should read it. Should we give them a thumbs up and say that other kids would like it, or would you say other kids don't need to read it? I think other kids should read it. You think other kids should read it? Okay. Well, it gets the Eileen stamp of approval. Thank you, Eileen. Give me five. All right. Although she was listening on audiobook. I think it would be a little difficult for a seven-year-old to read, but audiobook, it, it uh, she enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, the pros were kind of middle of the road. They weren't, they weren't like badly on the nose, but, but they weren't you know, um, they weren't focused on being super poetic. I think it worked good for the audience he's aiming at. Um, they kind of just were to the point, um, you know, uh, getting, uh, getting that going. The plot, sometimes in allegory, you get a plot that's just too convenient. You know, it's just like everything kind of ties up. I like what he did in this because it wasn't that way. There was, there was enough, um, there was enough unique material, um, and he, even some unique creatures that I liked that kind of reminded me of large doodle bugs, is what we call them in the South. I don't know what you call them in other places, but um, there was enough of interesting little uh, tidbits like that that made it unique. The um, the people group that the character meets um, have some unique characteristics, which I liked. Um, uh, so there was there was enough in the plot that made it um, unique, that it was enjoyable. Um, the exposition, I think he did a good job of giving us a slow reveal. Um, I know, especially in allegory, it's really tempting to just do exposition dump, you know, where you just tell people what the the previous thousand years uh, goings on were. Uh, but I I liked this in that you, you kind of are discovering the world along with the character. So the narrative the narrative style stayed pretty tight with the um, the main character's perspective, so you didn't get those those you know massive exposition dumps um, you, you, that you get in some stories. Uh, conceptually, I wouldn't call it 
absolutely unique, but I wouldn't call it derivative either. I think for what it is, since it is allegory, I think he did a really good job of keeping it from being too derivative because that's the that's what's easy to trip into. Um, di dialogue was solid. There was one character that I really liked the dialogue. Every time he spoke to, he was a military character. Every time he spoke to his uh, his soldiers, he had new uh, a new slew of of uh, interesting and enduring insults. And that's kind of an odd thing, but you'll, you'll see what I mean if you read it. So um, he, and, and this is, since this is a Christian book, they were all clean, but they were also funny, and they were also endearing in some way. You could tell he loved his, his uh, soldiers, and he would insult them in a way that was also endearing. I don't know. You'll just have to see. I liked that aspect. I thought so so each time that character showed up, it was kind of a candy bar. It's kind of a treat to hear what new thing he is going to call his soldiers. So that was that was kind of fun. And so I think, you know, for me that bumped the dialogue um score up a little bit because um I could tell he did some work to come up with some fun some fun stuff in that area. So my my focus wandered a little bit. We were we were listening to it on audiobook mostly while I was taking the kids to school. I will say my my kids' attention was with it the whole time. So I I put it kind of in the middle of the road here on focus because it just depends on it depends on what age the audience is. If it's for kids, I don't think their minds are going to wander. I think they're going to they're going to stick with it. If it's if it's a parent reading to the kids, um, your mind might wander a little bit. The scope was pretty personal, but had some political aspects in it. Uh, you know, kind of um, um, the king's court and stuff like that. But really, it was it was mostly personal. Um, the narrative leaned towards dialogue um, and some inner monologue while the character was um, kind of on his own. And the Christian themes, they were allegorical. So once again, you could read this, and if you're not in tune with biblical themes, you may not even you may not even realize that you're reading something that's biblical allegory. Now, I, there's a couple of things that I personally liked about this book. One of the things that I liked about this book is the focus on belief. Um, so I've read some allegory before where the... Um, they make everything contingent on behavior, on obedience and things like that, or or maybe it's a belief plus behavior. In this, what I liked is getting into the new world, um, the, uh, the fantasy world, um, it was about what he believed. It was about believing um, in something. And I like that because for me, personally, that lines up with my view of the gospel, that uh, salvation is given by belief in Jesus, by faith alone, and so I really like that. I, I feel like that was a um, that was a masterful touch by the author.